Hi folks, this is Brian at Hobby Link Japan bringing you Boss Builds, sponsored by Hobby Link Japan. And uh, we've been building the Fujimi 172nd scale um, Type 10 main battle tank. And uh, in the last couple episodes I put it together and we were talking about painting it. And today we're going to talk about painting it some more and what kind of equipment I use. So today we're going to talk about some of the equipment that I use and the paints that I decided to use for this build. Uh, to finish off the Type 10 main battle tank. And uh, to start with, I'll show you my, this is my personal airbrush. I bought this about 10 years ago when I was living in Osaka. This was way before I worked at Hobbling Japan. Um, the reason I got this, this is the Tamiya HG Trigger type, as you can see, bam, bam, Trigger type airbrush, uh, the HG series, high grade, so you know it's good. Uh, it's the top of the line um, in their HG series. Uh, it's a double action airbrush. Uh, usually with the normal uh, button type airbrushes, the double action is you push down to release the air and you pull back uh, to get the paint flow going. But with the trigger type, uh, you adjust where you want the needle to engage, as it were, with this uh, adjustment in the back here. And when you start pulling the trigger, you get only the airflow coming out. And then it sort of hits the engage point. And then from that point on uh, is when you can adjust the airflow or the, uh, the paint flow, as it were. Um, so it's easy to use. Uh, I, the main reason I got this is because uh, as I keep harping on, I've got big hands. This is easy to hold uh, for me. I usually hold it like this, actually, because my hands are this big, as you can see, and uh, operate it with my middle finger here, point, 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 like that. Uh, so it's really comfortable to use, um, particularly if you're painting um, for long periods of time. Um, I've never really used the button type uh, too much, but just the, the times I have used it, it's really uncomfortable because these things are quite small. Uh, now, <clears throat> this particular airbrush uses a uh, 0.3 millimeter nozzle, uh, which is kind of a, just a general standard size, uh, but you can get, uh, Tamiya claims you can get up to less than one millimeter width lines. You can draw with, uh, paint with this thing, uh, but also when you open it up, wide up, uh, you can do uh, good coverage for painting large surfaces. Uh, so it's a good all-around general purpose airbrush. Uh, so that's why I bought it, with the idea that I might buy some um, different airbrushes later on, something for more um, finesse type work, something even for larger spraying areas. But um, up until now, I found that this one does everything I need. Uh, so the Tamiya Spray Work HG Trigger Airbrush. Uh, and again, this is my personal one. We do have them on sale at Hobby Link Japan in stock now. Check them out. Uh, it's really very good. The d design hasn't changed in uh, since it's come out because it's so good. Uh, now we also have a, this type has a removable 7cc color cup on top here that you can take off and you can add bigger cups if you want or smaller ones if you don't want the big one on there. Uh, and they also have a, it's the, the same thing with a molded on cup. The, the cup and the body is one piece. Um, just saves on cleaning and uh, less things go wrong when you have less moving parts. Um, and that one's a little more expensive because it's molded in one piece. But this is a great airbrush, highly recommended. And that's my airbrush. Now what I use for a compressor is the Tamiya Spraywork Revo, Rebo, as it's called in Japanese, the Revo here. Uh, this is a very, very simple compressor. Uh, again, I bought it at the same time I bought this airbrush about 10 years ago. Um, definitely with the idea that I would grade up at some point and get a, a, you know, a larger, more complex, more comprehensive style of compressor. Uh, but in the 10 years I've had it, uh, again, like the airbrush, um, it's done everything I've needed it to do. It's a very, very simple one. There's, it's got no pressure regulation. Um, you can't change the, the amount of pressure or whatever. You just turn it on, it blows air. You turn it off, it stops blowing air. Uh, it's very quiet, so you can use it uh, in an apartment situation or at home, and it won't wake up your babies next, in the next room, anything like that. Um, but yeah, just a very simple compressor that's uh, done everything I've needed it to do in the 10 years that I've been using it. So highly recommended for this too. Um, and not surprisingly, you can get them both in one set. This is the Tamiya HG Trigger airbrush with the Revo compressor. Um, now, interestingly enough, if you buy them separately, it costs exactly the same as buying the set. So you don't really save anything by buying the set as opposed to buying them separately. But if you already have a good compressor uh, that you're happy with and you just want the airbrush, then you can just get the airbrush, vice versa. If you just need a compressor, a nice quiet compressor, um, there it is, ready to use. Uh, these are very easy to use and fun to use. And as I've said, I've used them both for 10 years, no problems. Um, another thing that I don't ever use is a um, a water trap or a water filter type thing. Uh, many modelers uh, swear by them because if you don't want to be airbrushing and then suddenly have a blob of water plop through and well where's this water coming from you might ask uh, well sometimes it condenses inside of the hose. There's a hose as you can see here kind of this clear hose 
well, depending on what you have, uh, from the hose to your airbrush, um, in certain climates, certain weather conditions, um, water can condense inside that hose and uh, splurt out uh, at the least opportune time as you're trying to spray some fine work or something and blam, it'll ruin your paint job. Um, I always thought about getting one, but again, in the 10 years that I've been using my airbrush, this system here, uh, I've never had a problem with water, so I just haven't got around to getting one, but uh, you know, that fateful day might be coming where I get a big plop of water somewhere. Maybe even in this build, but let's hope not. Um, but uh, it is always recommended to have a, a, a water trap, but I've never used one, so try it out and see how you like it. Uh, now for paint, I talked before in the last few episodes what I was going to do. I'm going to prime the tank. Uh, with Tamiya's enamel flat black. Uh, this is, will allow me to adjust the intensity of the colors that I'm going to put on later. Uh, this will allow me to get a good uh, light and shadow effect uh, where all the, you know, all the nooks and crannies and uh, undercut parts and all of that uh, will stay black and uh, the camouflage colors on top and other detailing colors will stand out on top. Um, I wanted to put down an enamel uh, base for the primer and um, because it's, it's tough it works it grips the plastic good uh, and then I'm going to use some acrylic paints on top now last time I think I was vacillating between using the Mr. Color lacquer paints from Gunze Sangyo or Tamiya's very nice uh, acrylic paints and although I was kind of leaning towards the Gunze ones uh, for the color. I like the color a little bit darker. I decided to go with the Tamiya colors and I'll tell you why. Well, they're acrylic. That means they're non-toxic uh, and I've got a little uh, one-year, uh, eight-month-old son uh, who will be in the room next to me while I'm painting and I don't really want him to be breathing in lacquer fumes uh, while I'm painting this tank. So I'm gonna go with the acrylic. And uh, another thing that led me to do that besides uh, protecting my son's health and my own health for that matter uh, is the fact that I am going to prime it with black and so that will let me um, sort of control the intensity of the colors as I'm painting it. Uh, these are a little lighter than, than the Gunze colors and I, would, I like the darker ones a little bit better but since it's going to be black I can keep it kind of dark uh, by the amount of paint I put on. Um, or that's the plan anyway. So I'm going to be painting it all black with the Tamiya flat enamel, and then I'll be using these flat acrylic enamels uh, to paint the camouflage colors. And then I will probably be using a combination of enamels and acrylics to do some weathering later. Uh, so the final stage of this build will be the weathering and then the final uh, flat coat that I'll put on top at the end. Um, another great paint that we have in stock at HLJ. Oh, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but uh, due to strict uh, international shipping standards for paints, um, we can no longer ship uh, lacquers or enamels uh, overseas anymore. Um, now, water-based paints, though, are usually okay. And even though we can't ship these, it, it's, it's kind of weird. Things get stopped at the airport. One reason we can't ship these is because they're in glass bottles. And a liquid in a glass bottle always gets stopped at the x-ray um, Kensa. And Kensa in English would be test. That's right. I knew I'd remember it. Uh, and without even opening the box, they just ship it back to us. So we've had to stop shipping anything glass and in a bottle. Now, I think Scott in his uh, LFA build is using the Vallejo brand of colors. Uh, and so far, we've uh, had good luck with these getting through, um, it's not customs, but getting through the before it gets on an airplane to be shipped tests that they do. Uh, and that's because these are in plastic bottles and uh, completely non-toxic. Uh, when we were at the Vallejo booth, at a hobby show a couple years ago, the guy was even just like plopping on his tongue to show us how uh, non-volatile and non-toxic they were. I uh, don't recommend doing that though, probably doesn't taste too good. Uh, but we still uh, offer these to our overseas customers, it's still in the catalog, and as long as they're in the catalog, uh, you can still order them. Um, now, why don't I use these on this build? Uh, well, they don't have the exact color I want, or I should say they don't have the exact color written on the label. Now another secret about Old Brian here, as I mentioned uh, the other day, was uh, as I'm getting older, eyesight's not as good as it used to be. As with this uh, tiny little build here, I was noticing uh, I couldn't focus as close. But one problem I've had my whole life is I'm red-green colorblind, and uh, it doesn't really affect life in, in general because life's still a, vi a vibrant pageantry of uh, colors that I can see. But I have some troubles checking out the reds and the greens. And so what is written on the labels really helps me out a lot. So Tamiya has helped me out a lot by putting the exact color I need on the label. You know, this one is, uh, this is brown for the Japan Ground Self-Defense Force. And this is the dark green that I needed. So the colors are right on here. 
Um, now I don't have any trouble doing the gradations in intensity that I want because that's really not a color thing. That's more of a, you know, just an intensity or a lightness or darkness thing. So I don't have problems there. Uh, so the, yet another reason why I'm going with the Tamiya colors is because uh, it's labeled and mixed for the exact colors that I want. Uh, I'm not too good at mixing custom colors because uh, particularly for greens and browns and reds like this, I really can't see them. Um, so that's probably one of the only reasons I didn't go with the Vallejos, although someday I do want to try them because uh, as you've seen Scott doing his LFA build, uh, they seem to be really easy to work with. And they make uh, airbrush ready ones. Uh, this is already thinned down and ready to, to blow through any airbrush you have without doing uh, much or any thinning, which we didn't talk about yet for these with the enamels and the acrylics. Uh, they're usually too thick as they are in the bottle, so I've got um, um, enamel thinner that I'll be mixing with the black to thin it down to a good consistency uh, to spray with and the same with the acrylics. Uh, they both have their special um, Tamiya branded uh, acrylic and enamel thinners. Uh, and I'll show you this when I'm actually doing the painting and mixing, um, which I'll do at home. Uh, I usually mix the paint to the consistency of milk. That's what uh, if you, you know, ask people, most people who are uh, proficient with airbrushing, uh, what's, a, what's a rough general rule? Uh, consistency of milk seems to be the general answer. And so when I'm mixing it and uh, picking up with my little stir and seeing how it's dropping, um, when I think it's the consistency of milk, that's usually what I go with. You don't want it too thick because it'll clog up the brush. And if it's too thin, it'll splatter and uh, essentially be too thin and won't cover as well. So that's paint. That's some of the equipment. Uh, and next I'll show you some of the tricks that I'm going to use to actually paint the model. So when it comes down to actually painting the model, uh, one thing you always have to be concerned about is how to hold it when you're painting. Uh, some people just lay it on a table and go to town with the paint, uh, but that doesn't really give you good control over where you're going to be or where you want the paint to get, uh, particularly if you're using an airbrush. Um, you can't really turn it upside down or do any crazy movements like that, so you want the parts that you're painting to be as mobile as possible. And once particularly for this build and tanks in general, uh, you need something round to stick into the turret and into the body and nothing comes in handier than empty toilet paper rolls. Uh, and in most of the free world, you can get empty toilet paper rolls pretty easily. And what I do is, you know, just scrunch it up so it'll fit in there, shove it into the turret. Now this friction fits pretty good, so I don't have to worry about it falling off. Um, so when I'm painting uh, the primer coat on here, I can hold it. Usually I'll put uh, some gloves on or in lieu of gloves, I just stick my hand into a vinyl paper bag, which we don't have any of here I could show you, but you know, you don't really have to have too much dexterity to hold this. Put a uh, plastic bag, vinyl bag on your hand, um, and then I just sit in my spray booth, which I will show you, uh, which is at home, and you know, just go to town spraying it. I'll show you some of the techniques of actually painting it later. Uh, one quick thing I can talk about here though is whether you're using an airbrush or a spray can, uh, you never want to start the spraying pointing directly at the model. Why? Well, there might be some paint clogged up in there, uh, the aforementioned water might be in there, hopefully not. Um, or even if that doesn't happen, you're still going to have a big burst of paint going right on the model. You should always start off the model, move past the model, and then cut off when you get past the model. Or if you, you, know, you want to go back and forth and smooth movements like that, that's fine too. Uh, but always be careful not to start your spray on the model because you could have terrible awful results you don't want that uh, but yeah using this little thing like this and holding my airbrush as i do um, i will probably be painting in a motion not unlike this as i just go back and forth sha 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 getting good coverage everywhere uh, like that and so there's that and the same thing with the hull as you can see here i've already pre-shoved a toilet paper roll into there and uh, it's got, again, a good friction fit so it won't fall off. So I can just hold it up like this, rest your arm on something, hopefully not a new product like this, and uh, you know, just go to town spraying it. Um, if I need to get directly on the top here, and this is going to be in the way, just wait till it's a little dry at some point, take that out. Uh, and with an airbrush, um, you've got such good control over it. Uh, and again, I might just have a plastic bag on my hand. You can just hold it and uh, cover up whatever parts you might have missed. Um, Another good key to airbrushing or painting in general is make sure you've got a lot of good light so you can see what you have painted and what you haven't painted. Uh, you don't want to lay it on too thick and obscure the de uh, details. Uh, on the other hand, you don't want to miss places and leave bare plastic. So that's how I'm going to paint this guy at home with these two very helpful toilet paper roll thingies. Um, again, you should always keep a supply of these because they come in handy when you're modeling. Uh, go back to the paint again for just a minute. 
Uh, I mentioned I'm going to put down an enamel coat uh, for the primer and I'm going to put the acrylics on top of the enamel. Now you don't want to do it the other way and you definitely don't want to put lacquer on top of anything else. Uh, I think we had a few comments. Uh, some uh, one of Mahler wrote in and said that they had a problem with the, the, color, un, the colors underneath bleeding through. Uh, there could be several factors involved in that. Uh, the paints might not have been dried enough and kind of bled through. Um, but another reason could be if you use a lacquer paint on top of an enamel or an acrylic, lacquer will eat through anything super strong. Uh, so if you're ever going to use a combination of the three, you should do it like this. Here's a visual representation, lacquer on the bottom, then enamels, and then acrylics on top. And you'll be fine with that. You ne never ever do this because you'll just go right to the bottom. So yeah, acrylics on top, enamels in the middle, and lacquers on the bottom. And uh, helpful safety painting tip from Brian. Another safety tip uh, when you're painting is you should always have some sort of a um, mask or covering on your uh, face there to keep the harmful fumes from entering your lungs. Now I'll be doing mostly uh, with the acrylic paint so that's not too much to worry about uh, but it's always a good idea to have some protection, eye protection, things like that because uh, you don't want to get this stuff in your face. Um, oh no, another couple of comments I've seen uh, on the about the videos here is, oh my God, Brian, you have such a great job. You're building models all day at work. Oh, I wish I had a job like that. Uh, well, guess what, kids? Not building models at work. I'm doing all this at home. Uh, the only time we're spending, uh, that I'm spending here doing this at work is sitting here in front of the camera and talking about it. Uh, all the building has been done at home and all the painting I'll also be doing at home. Uh, so I'll set up my camera and uh, hopefully next time I will have some paint on this model to show you. Um, oh, so we're going to be at the Tokyo Hobby Show in a couple of weeks. I don't know if it'll be up uh, by the ne uh, next time this video is up, uh, but we'll have some video from the Tokyo Hobby Show uh, to show you. So look forward to that as well. And I'll see you next time on Boss Builds.